Shuja. Shuja. They have been underperforming. Very much. Um, Shuja have been in a constant, uh, would I say, series of under underperformance. Mm -hmm. uh, first it was the Cape Town, mm -hmm. and then now it's the Las Vegas whereby they actually, it's, it's like they've lost like six games in a row. It's, it's, it's really devastating, right. especially considering they're one of the best teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the, in the, in the, they are really doing terribly on the table. Mm -hmm. So I'm not quite sure what the problem is. Uh, the first it was matters of being paid. Right. And I think that was sorted. Uh, I'm not quite sure how, how it was sorted, but something is wrong with Shuja. And I'm not even sure where to start with it. Uh, I'm not even uh, surprised with this issue, but I'm like, uh, so even in rugby, we have issues with payment, just yeah, like in yeah, the rugby stars. That one, that one is there, but it's not just the, the payment. They, they also have injury issues, mm -hmm. and I don't know, Shuja has been just off, no matter how much they try to bring the... Going to Las Vegas, they had given us a promise that they were, they were going to do better than they did in Cape Town, in which case, I would say they tried, but still, they didn't try enough, because mm -hmm. the results just shows something different, considering what we expected of them. Actually, they have lost two, uh, two of their matches, uh, losing to USA 26-10 and then uh, to France 31-7. Actually, exactly. these people, they need to be... And then there was the Argentina one. Uh, it's, it's like, it's like uh, in, a, in as much as Suja is like trying to pick itself up, mm -hmm. we can't seem to see it. All right. So maybe they're doing something, but we just can't seem to see what they're doing. Because at but the moment, you know, Suja is one of the, like... In Kenya, when you look at Kenya in, in sports, you, you start with the athletics and then you go to Shuja. All right. And then, and then the other sports. Uh, actually, team. yeah. The, <laughs> the other people who bring us glory when they go out there, but this time around, it yeah, seems it's, things. Yeah, it's, it's, it's terrible. And it's not like, and I, I, I watched some of the game and I would see, I would see, like, you'd see they're they really trying their best, but it's just not working. I'm not quite sure if it's the coaches' ideas or it's just the players that are under motivated, mm -hmm. but just... So, Something's just off when it comes to Shuja. Uh, in your own opinion, what do you think should be done to our boys? Right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, rugby is, is, is pretty much a... a you can't as compare it with football, actually. No, no actually, you can. You can some, to some great large extent. In fact, some, some people, they think they call rugby football. Mm -hmm. But um, I, think, I think when you look at, when you look at, when you look at uh, how to, to... Rugby is just much uh, contact, contact, contact and team sport mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so if, if, you, if you find a way to bridge those two you just find a way to build the team right. so I think they should just look at that mm -hmm. and then they should look at the, the injury issue what's wrong why why are the injuries taking that long right beyond that I'm not quite sure what's supposed to be done to Shuja but Shuja is really underperforming and that's really devastating for us Kenyans all right I hope as one of the sports and with the new CS it will be one of the areas that we will be having to see changes in the near future can we sure. talk about Gormaya now? Yeah, moving on to Gormaya. Mm -hmm. Now, Gormaya, um, why should I start? Now, it, it has been always been said that whenever uh, a team from Kenya travels to foreign countries, right. uh, they always get this mistreatment. Like, uh, they, 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 you, you find like they are delayed in the airport. Right. Or whenever they go to the hotel, there's always a problem, mm -hmm. not enough rooms. You know, the service has always been poor. Mm -hmm. Now, that's one of the things that Gormaya are complaining about when they went to when they went uh, to play to the same day exactly right now it gets worse when the referee when you go to the, the pitch the referee is working against you you feel mm -hmm. or rather you feel like the referee is working against you <laughs> because god scored a legitimate goal this was a legitimate goal but it no was foul down on the goalkeeper at least not from god oh yeah, from their own people yeah but and because then, there was the a goal day, player yeah near them you see it was not a no goal player trust them, but at the end of the day mm -hmm. the goal was disallowed and do you think this could be because of fear or some of the rules should be applied? I don't know. When I think about it, I always think about it in the aspect that when the teams come to Kenya, the way we treat them, and the, we, we always give them a good treatment, a fair treatment, a treatment that we expect to get when we go to their country. True. Now, with that in mind, it hasn't always been the case. In fact, in most cases, it has been quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. So you start to wonder, is this, the, is this, like, is this something that they agree on is, or is this something that they normally do? It's, it's uh, but especially it's quite when they go to Arab countries. It's quite sad because actually they'll be doing it very soon. But now the problem is for how long will this continue if people will be traveling to another uh, country and then they'll be mistreated, maybe in the fear of they will defeat them or something else. Exactly my point. Because when you think about it, it's like, it's like this, is, this is not something that has just happened today. And, and when, you know, when, you, when you know football just as much as I do, you know that this is something that has been happening for a very, very long time. Now the devastating part is mm -hmm. God just came from an Arab country. Now they're going to an Arab country and you're starting to wonder mm -hmm. what will happen. 
will the same thing happen again maybe they should change and they come here we see how things will happen because it, or maybe they fear gormaya it could be it could be but mm -hmm. or they have found a way in intimidating us using our attitude well that's another way to look at uh, it okay uh, let me ask how do you behave when someone intimidates you not not <laughs> like this <laughs> <laughs> not because like this. maybe that, that that would affect a player but you know football is entertainment beyond and above everything right football is entertainment okay mm -hmm. it's it's business to some people it's uh food on the table to some people right. but it started as entertainment okay mm -hmm. once you take the entertaining part out of it it started to lose its value okay right now it becomes a bureaucratic thing that you don't want to make it be all right me i'm i'm hoping uh, in these matches that as we continue with gormaya because it is one team that has been facing this uh should i call it mistration or something <laughs> we're hoping things will change for them and maybe when they come to our country maybe how do we treat them they uh, have I, such cases I, no 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 in the we, recent we, past we, we just be the bigger person and you just treat them better so mm -hmm. that they can actually see the but you you start to wonder how how much how much better should we treat them because this is not like the first time this is happening this has happened time and time and again all right you know there was a time i was watching an interview and you would see like um pl players from previous like uh, old players they would say that this is something that used to happen to them now mm -hmm. no you know i'm Fast wondering forward, if the goldmeyer fans were here now, 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 that would be, that would be <laughs> something. This particular that would be something different. And and one thing I can actually almost guarantee you, the, mm -hmm. the, the referee would be feeling the intimidation from both sides. Oh God, Maya, wherever you go, but that means they are giants. Let's just fly the green flag and, <laughs> and hope the for the best. <laughs> All right, it's about time we moved to the international news now and um, look at what happened with one and only team that people thought they will not make it there. Now let's be honest. Um, there's been a lot of controversies about the penalty that you were given. Okay, the other goals were fair. It was clean. a clear handball. Hillary, I am sure <laughs> I you watched. Not, <laughs> Hillary, I am sure you watched the game. So I, I, I know you're just saying that as a fan. But to be quite sincere, mm -hmm. that handball, I'm, I'm not even sure how you call that an handball because mm -hmm. either, either, okay, he was innocent. Uh, no, 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 no. If you say it's a handball, then the ball hit the thigh, then hit the hand. In mm -hmm. which case, you can't blame him for that. All right. But it doesn't matter whether it hit the thigh, then the hand, or the hand and the thigh. doesn't matter. No, in football, it was then, a penalty. No, in football, <laughs> there's handball and then there's ball to hand. When it's handball, it's when you use your hand mm -hmm. intentionally right. to prevent the ball from serving a certain purpose. Right. Okay. Or in some case, you know, I, I'm not even sure how you give a handball. Like, like, like you, see, you look at it. You could, we can even look at it like and <laughs> they look at it like about 50 times anyway all the but anyway, uh, uh, away from the handball and everything else, away from the, the whole handball, match how, how from the handball i would say manchester really held their own because they were like constantly under pressure like time and time and time and again mm -hmm. they were under pressure and they were finding a way out they were finding a way to fight they were finding a way to like you know like the first the goal we were to miss if lukaku miscalculated just a little bit we do and, and, and have i have to goal. i have to give lukaku a lot of credit because he has been in constant form and you have to love what he's doing right now because it, when you look at the things that lukaku is doing you have to be proud you have to be happy because you the, saw the challenge I, lukaku how, was an action <laughs> how do you even miss that you know it was like it was impressive it was nice right i, I, I loved i love two goals it's not just the two goals it's two it's like about six six goals in three matches uh, the man is coming up you start to wonder goal, you, oh you know my. you have to wonder is it was it Mourinho or is it just Lukaku just that? I think it was Mourinho actually Mourinho has congratulated Manchester United for winning he should he better he yeah because when he left he said uh, he cannot win against PSG with the current Manchester United shame on him Yes, he actually said <laughs> he actually said Manchester United has the worst defense. Right. And he cannot see himself win against PSG with the same defense. And with this particular match, Manchester United never played a defensive game. Exactly. And they sat, and they sucked all the pressure that came in through the defense because they were every every man was playing like a, it was a team play. Right. And and they found a way to defend against PSG. Yes, there were some mistakes that were done, mm -hmm. but still they found a way out of it. Right. Because it was always constantly it was like Mbappe di Maria, Mbappe di Maria, Mbappe di Maria, and they found a way to succumb to the pressure. Right. So true, you, have true. To, you have to you have to actually that I think that is one of the mistakes the PSG team did. They had two people to to rely on 
But at that think, particular time. True. But then uh, it ended up that actually the goal that we had was a mistake from the goalkeeper. He punched. One thing, one thing I loved about Manchester, and this is the one thing, when you look at all the goals, there's one thing you've learned about Manchester. Mm -hmm. Ever since Solskjaer came to Manchester United, right. there's one thing that has been constant with them. Mm -hmm. They don't create too many chances, but, but the few they create, they make the most of it. Right. They don't create too many chances. But the few they create, they, you'd, you'd, they you'd like see they want a goal. They, they are hungry for a goal. And that's, that's what's important. That's what's... All right. And now I think you owe me one because I see it here. We will give them their two goals and at least be served from their table. And it happened. First of all, you didn't say it like that. But then again, <laughs> when you think about it, okay. Okay. All right. Uh, what's happening to Real Madrid? I'm not even sure where to start. Real Madrid are in, 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 in a dilemma. I, I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to call it a dilemma because it's, it's Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. They have everything. If it's the money they have, mm -hmm. it's the players they have. But right now I'm not quite sure what's not hard working. But what I fail to understand the most is why the coach insists on starting bail from the bench. Right. I, I'm not sure about that. And then, I don't know, Madrid, I think they're just in a uh, Just a few weeks they were bragging. Uh, people well, thought with... Cristiano, they will lose it, but they have been good. But now, look at them. This was bad. This was awful. For anyone who knows football, for what it is, <laughs> this was devastating. This was like horrible. This is like watching Defense a horror. very poor, was like clearance poor. I was, I was saying if I was a Madrid fan, I would be like... I, I don't think I you know, at some point I used to <laughs> support Madrid because of Cristiano. Nowadays, I even don't follow what is happening with Real. Well, you'd say that there was uh, there was some level of, uh, of attention that Cristiano brought brought to Manchester in, uh, to Real Madrid. Right. So with Cristiano being gone, that 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 attention has kind of like got because it hasn't gone to Juventus. Mm -hmm. Juventus are not getting the attention. But now uh, maybe uh, to speak of Real Madrid, they have many strikers. Do you think relying on a particular striker is better than having? A number of them. You know, when you go to Champions League, Champions League is different from Premier League. Mm -hmm. Most coaches intend to use experience rather than youth right. when it comes to Champions League. Mm -hmm. And when you look, you, you cannot put Benzema on bench just because you want to put another striker. But it's not just that. They have injury cases as right. well, right. which are actually hindering their causes in going forward. All right. So, I'm not sure. But what I don't understand is why does he insist on starting? It's not just this game. It's just, he keeps on insisting on starting Bell on bench. And this is just creating a lot of uh, all right, we will be taking a very short break, but before then, uh, let's talk about one of the other teams that is still in the Tottenham uh, Hotspur. Yes, Tottenham. Uh, actually, they played with Borussia. Yeah, and and the funny thing, the entire match was a Borussia Borussia affair. Like right. uh, you could not see Tottenham do anything except the one goal that they scored, and then. <laughs> <laughs> But, but then I think they were afraid because they, they saw what Manchester know, did. When, when I watched that match, it reminded me of the match that uh, against uh, Manchester United against uh, Tottenham. Right. Where De Gea made the most saves. Like, you remember that match? Yeah, I it remember. Was like, it was like De Gea versus Tottenham. Uh, now, when, you, when, <laughs> <laughs> when, I looked, when I looked at the Borussia... It that's the bad. <laughs> <laughs> when I looked at the Borussia Dortmund game right. uh, against Tottenham, mm -hmm. it was like Hugo Lloris mm -hmm. versus Borussia. So the man played alone. The, the, the man, it was like he was playing alone in that match. What happened to the players? I don't the know. The 10 of them. They, they, were just they were just creating opportunities for consuming pressure. And you would like see it. Mm -hmm. They were being exposed in every angle, in every dimension, in every aspect. And Borussia was just not making. But in some cases, you'd say Tottenham were lucky. All right. After the... We don't know when the draw, draw is, comes out. But then... Uh, what do you think will happen because the round of 16 is almost to an end? Uh, the round of, well, well, we have to wait for, wait for the next week matches. Mm -hmm. But at this moment, I think we, it, it has started to shape up uh, how, how, the Champions, how the Champions League will be. But me, personally, I won't lie. Mm -hmm. I'm happy Real are out. Mm -hmm. It's really awful when you have a very big prestigious trophy like this one and it's just ruled by one club constantly, time and time and again. Right. And considering that they're the mo they are the team with the most Champions League in the world, right. it's, it's really bad when they win it three times consecutive and still go on to like this year. Mm -hmm. Personally, I was happy that they were out. Right. Nothing against Madrid. Would you, would you, would you wish Manchester United to take this? No. Really? Yeah. I think the whole world <laughs> will not sleep. <laughs> no, we will just, just be happy. We will just be happy. From the Kenya, just from the Kenyan fans, I don't think the you whole world You want to say the memes that trend come from Kenyans? 
Yeah, I think Kenyans create, take it to another level. All right, Kenyans, <laughs> we have something good. We are very innovative and creative. We'll be taking a very short break. Do not go too far. Y254, imagine. Let's run for each other to achieve universal health care for every Kenyan. Sign up on our website, www.beyondzero.or.ke or at a registration center near you today to be part of the Beyond Zero 2019 Half Marathon. Sunday, 10th March at Nyayo Stadium. Together, we will inspire action and change lives. We are leaving no one behind. Register today. Hello, this is Lioness Hayes from Costa Rica, and I would like to send a big salute full of respect to Y254 TV and also to tell you to stay tuned with Island Vibes Reggae Show every Friday from 8 to 10 p.m. Don't miss it. You know what, what? Full reggae music and the best energy. Blessed love from the land of Pura Vida. Yes, sir. Y254. Imagine. Many thanks for keeping us company. If you just tuned in, this is Y254 Sports of Friday. I'm Dereva Hilary and I'm with my co-host Eddie Ogoe. Now, we want to talk about the Europa. Time to see what is happening to Arsenal. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it is your team. Well, I just, uh, before before you uh, respond, I saw a friend of mine posted uh -huh. uh, posted um, should I call it a meme or something? Mm -hmm. A clip of someone crying and saying it's too much. Then I was like, hey, bro, Niaji. It's and then okay. <laughs> it's way too early to say it's too much because they are they they're, they're not out of the Europa. Mm -hmm. But I've always said this, and I think I'll keep on saying it. I think. When Arsenal was on an unbeaten run, I mm -hmm. used to agree with a lot of judgments that Unai Emery made, especially when it came to substitutions. Right. But after that, after the Liverpool game, I don't know what happened to Unai. Mm -hmm. He started just making decisions that you could, you, you had to question no matter how. You know, so like, yes, yeah, na make up, na mean make up, but still as man, you can pish on your kitungu in Angua. Right. I, 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 when you look at it, even in, in every aspect, you just see like this, something is lacking. When you, uh, the match against Tottenham in the Premier League previously, mm -hmm. you would see like Iwobi was constantly underperforming. He was losing balls. He was costing Arsenal more than he was actually helping. He was not helping in defense. Mm -hmm. And he insisted on putting Iwobi on and removed Lacazette, who was causing constant pressure to the Tottenham defense. And then coming on to this match, he did the same, same thing again, mm -hmm. where he actually removed Aubameyang. At, I don't know if he removed him for the sake of to, he wanted to defend. Mm -hmm. And then you make Ramsey attack. And then why? Just because you had a red card does not mean that you have to like change the game shift to defensive purely. Right. You know? Because before the red card, Arsenal was leading 1-0. And then actually, after the red yeah. card, three goals came in. So all your defensive tactics did not work because if they were to work, at the most you would concede is one goal. Uh, uh, is that to mean that uh, the, the the players were affected by the red? The red card did affect the, the red card did affect the gameplay because before the red card, Arsenal were in control of the game, right. and then instantly they get the, the red card, and then Reigns actually then got the confidence. At what point did it come to be three goals? It was just and they happened so fast. No, no, it, it didn't actually. It, the fight, uh, the the first half ended two one, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then when they came back, the second half. The, the second uh, the, the the second goal came in way later when the game was about to end. Right. The third goal that is came in way later when the goal the game was about to end, and then you start to wonder like, what's wrong with these people? All right. You know. Now, do do you think in any case, were it not for the red, would have Arsenal lost to Rennes in any way? I don't think they would have lost the game. In fact, I would think they would have won with so many goals mm -hmm. because they were in control of the game. Rennes were intimidated. They were not feeling. They were not in there. They felt like they were not in their league. Right. And Arsenal was in. Well, well, they were courageous going forward. So I think Arsenal would have created more chances and they would have converted them. I was even looking forward to looking at the uh, the. the Ozil and Mkhitaryan combination because it has worked very well. Right. And then the red card just destroyed everything. I think it really All right. destroyed You have a chance for a second leg. One goal. Hmm? So what happens when you meet them next? Oh. Well, if I was a Rene coach, the best, uh, the one thing I would do, mm -hmm. I would come with an attacking mind because when you come to Arsenal, when you come to the Emirates with a defensive mind, mm -hmm. you will lose. Mm -hmm. 
Actually. That's what the 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 the, the, the what, that's what they, Bristol did, mm -hmm. and they lost the match. So you, you'll I, be looking for go, for goals. I hope so. Anyway, <laughs> moving forward, uh, Chelsea put on a stellar performance this weekend mm -hmm. uh, as they faced Dynamo Kiev. Right. Yes, and it was really really interesting because I saw Chelsea play as a team. They okay. played a compact game. Every player was moving on the right way, like how you'd expect them to move. And and the goals were spectacular. They no excluding the Pedro goal because that was just uh, like a rush on scramble and then boom, a goal. Uh, but uh, goal is a goal at the end. But of the day. Pedro tried. Pedro no, tried. Pedro was the best performer. Actually, the in match. this particular match, Pedro did. Actually, he did he, he was on the highlights. True, Pedro did more because even even this goal that I'm talking about, it's not like he just. It's just that it was they they, they made football a look beautiful a bit pass. easy. Yeah, they made football look easy, you right. know. Mm -hmm. And Pedro was always constantly attacking, constantly attacking, and every chance he got. Yeah, 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 yeah. And but <laughs> it was Hudson Hudoi who actually yeah. because he was the best performer in the previous match, right? And then he was still performing in his like uh, you, you have to love the boy the way he plays, the way he carries himself, the way he moves, mm -hmm. the way he, he, he opens himself. You, you, you have to love his way of play, right? The, the kid is a stellar performer, and then William came back with his free kick. Man, that was something that I would watch on. He's one of on the again. man who could be said was in the bush. To be honest, the free kick was the one thing that I could watch like 10 times and I would never get tired Christiano of watching it. This, this was a Cristiano. Actually, this was a messy performance. Yeah, you know, there, was a time I was watching, there was a time I was watching a meme. Like, um, uh, they, 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 they say that when Messi is about to take a penalty, the fans are always like relaxed because mm -hmm. Messi is not really that good in penalties. Right. But when the guy is about to take a free kick, right. everybody's like... No, but they cannot. <laughs> they can never, at any given point, be better than Cristiano. Well, well, that's so. A, William did what he did. Well, the, the only reason I would I would agree with what you're about to say is because <laughs> if William was ever to be better than Cristiano, he would have done it like two years ago. But if he hasn't done it by now, he that will, will never he will happen. Never be. But, but he has still, come back, you actually. have to give William the credit mm -hmm. because the thing, the, the the way Chelsea played. It was it was a good performance. It was the performance that you would hope to see constantly. It was what you liked to see from all the Chelsea games that you've been seeing throughout the year. All right, I now want us to move to a different matter. One of the match that makes the weekend. Uh, this coming Sunday, if yeah, we could have the table and see the rest to top four. The rest to top four has become exciting. Right. It's not just because of any other reason, but because of the simple reason that. No one is sure of his number at the moment. Not even Tottenham, who felt safe at number three. Right. Right now, they are threatened because if they lose their next match, mm -hmm. then there will just be a point. Right. But I think if if I was to speak the truth, it was the, it is the Manchester game against Arsenal that we're supposed to focus on the most right. because this game will determine a lot of things. If Manchester win, they go four points clear of Arsenal, okay. Right. But if Arsenal wins, they go two points clear of Manchester. But it's not just that. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that if Chelsea wins and wins the game in hand, Chelsea go on top of them both. Okay. Especially if they draw. Okay. But I would like them to win <laughs> and I would like to see what it does to Tottenham because Tottenham are the ones who are the, under the most pressure. They were 10 points clear of both, both teams, mm -hmm. but right now they're just 4 points clear. All right. Of, of Arsenal, they're 3 points clear of Manchester United. And if I'm, uh, I, I look at this head to head, uh, the, most of the matches between Arsenal and Manchester have been on a Sunday and Saturday. Yeah. But Sunday the most. Sunday the most. And for every single time given, like a Sunday, Manchester would beat Arsenal. No, not really. When you look at October, majority, October. if not all, <laughs> I'm sure you are going to stretch to that. But we when you look at May okay, 2017 games? last year, uh, okay. uh, how, ma last how, year many how many games are these? These are like about what six games dating back to 2015, that 2017, back to 2015. 2016, six and 2017. Actually, True. there's a history. I'm hoping it will repeat itself. In that is, this, is six, this is six games, okay? And in, in the six games, when you look at it, Arsenal mm -hmm. have just won as much games as Manchester United, and the draws have been equal. Oh, uh, no. I don't think so. How many games? Look at eyes, it. Arsenal won 2-0. May 7th, 2017. 2017. Okay, look at it. That was the first time. Yeah, Arsenal After beat. After so many years. Okay, so in 2017, <laughs> the first match, Arsenal beat Manchester United. Right. And on, on the second game, they drew. They drew. On the third game, Manchester United beat Arsenal. Okay? Yes. And then on the fourth game, Arsenal came back mm -hmm. and took the victory. That was 2015. That was 2015. And then on the next game, they drew. All right, and then on <laughs> four wins, four wins, five times draws, and then eleven times wins for Manchester United. 
So this is this is like this this is more than one game. This is like dating back way to 2020 or 22. This is like way back to 2013. I but I have to agree. You with remember? One thing. You but remember 25th thing, January? But there's one thing I will agree. There's mm -hmm. one thing I will totally agree. Mm -hmm. Manchester United has always had their upper hand when it came to facing Arsenal. Right. Okay. Especially and that's at the because it's yeah 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 true. <laughs> but that's because in in most cases right. Uh, you, when you look at the, the, the like every time Arsenal went, I think there's, there's a fear factor that has been created on top of Arsenal when, whenever they meet Manchester United. Right. Because whenever Wenger used to play against Manchester United, they used to struggle, and that used to create a lot of problems. True. So I think I think right now with Unai Emery, they're trying to come out of that fear. Mm -hmm. And Unai Emery, I, although I'm not quite sure how he'll perform this weekend, because I am really not sure with his player selection and his substitution. So Actually, for Manchester United, a number of players will be back. Yeah, yeah. That he had and, injuries. And, and, and considering Pogba was rested du during the, the Champions League, right. he, he will, will be, be fresh. Right. You know? He's Arsenal coming. Will be without, Arsenal will be without a very, very important midfielder, Torreira. Mm -hmm. Torreira won't play because Torreira has a red card, which is really bad. Because when you think about it, this is like a very important game that you'd expect someone like that to be in the match. So it will be the biggest match in the weekend. Now, what do you think Emery should do to your team to ensure that they win this? I think and take away the shame. Personally, it will just start with the player selection. If he, is, if he's, he, he puts on a good selection, right. Arsenal have the chances of beating Manchester United. But if he does put on a different uh, lineup, I, I think Arsenal will struggle to even play that game. Let alone, and you know, the Arsenal are at home, so they have an advantage on top of Manchester United, but it's an advantage that they could easily lose because right. they did lose it when they played them on the FA. Right. But on the defence, when it came to the FA match, Arsenal had injury crisis. I hope that won't happen this time mm -hmm. and I, I am sure we'll find a very entertaining football match. All right, uh, like always... Looking at the table. Okay, your, your, your Nini, uh, you said if Arsenal, Arsenal beats Manchester United, there will be two points and then if Chelsea wins the match and the, the other match, then they come on top of us. Yeah. Then Tottenham are if Tottenham in lose, trouble. If Tottenham lose mm -hmm. and Manchester United win, right? then Manchester United, there we go. Uh, they will be tied points with Tottenham. Tottenham will Actually, be leading with goals. will be number four. Actually, no, Tottenham will be leading with goals. We have very few matches to go. Uh, yes, we don't have many matches. Uh, after, this, after, after this game, I think we'll be having eight matches to go. Yeah, And we can see who will be in top four. We still yeah, top wait. four is still unsettled. Even when you look at Manchester City and Liverpool, there's just a one-point difference. So it will be very difficult to determine who is who in top four at the moment. But people Everyone say it's a two-horse two race. Yeah, well, it's a two-horse race for them. But then again, you cannot really tell who will be number one or who will be number two because right now, it's still open. But uh, Arsenal have been saying number four is this. We will wait and see. Maybe we'll move to number three because no, that's where we belong. Arsenal has the best... Actually, when you look at it, Arsenal has the best chance of taking number three because when you look at it, Arsenal have already played... All, after Manchester United, they'll be clear of the big six games. Now, mm. Manchester United hasn't played Chelsea. Manchester United hasn't played Tottenham. Hasn't played Manchester City. Right. So you see, Manchester United are still in a gamble. Chelsea, on the other hand, have also... I haven't played, uh, they haven't played what? They haven't played Manchester United because that's the second last game. Right. Or the third last game mm -hmm. in the Premier League. And, they, and when you look at it, Arsenal are clear. After this, they are clear of the top four challenge. It's a wait and see matter. We're running out of time, but we have to tell you what will happen here in Kenya. Chimilili Sugar will be playing so far. Paka, Postal Rangers against Karyobangi Sharks. Mother United, if we could be having that at fixture here with us and Sunny Sugar will be playing Mount Kenya United Task FC versus Leopards and that will be a very interesting match uh, Olinzi <laughs> Stars and Bandari actually leave which is the Sunday yeah that one is the Sunday match those are the two biggest matches this weekend when it comes to the KPL mm -hmm. the the Tasker match against uh, FC Leopard right. FC Leopard are going to face their previous coach mm -hmm. uh, their previous player as a coach right. uh, Matano mm -hmm. and and this is really creating something but I think the match is interesting because this is a match that dates back because it's a, it has always been an entertaining match even when you go back to the previous fixtures all right and then uh, Gormaya plays Kakamega homeboys on Wednesday yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that's that. That also should be a match in Derby. Yeah. How? Kakamega Kaka 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 Yeah. Okay, Kakamega and EFC one and the same thing. No, Kakamega <laughs> and EFC. That's a that's a Western Derby. Eh? But when it comes to Kakamega <laughs> homeboys and 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 Gormaya, yeah, that's still a match in Still a match in That's a match in Mugo na match in Wengi. Yeah, nuzuru nuzuru kutafuta match in All right, it's time we go home. <laughs>
<laughs> well, we hope to meet you all next week when we have more sports for you. I am Eddie Ogoe. You can find me at I am Eddie Ogoe at all my social media handles. Many thanks for keeping us company. I'm Dereva Hillary. I'll see you on Monday. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye. Bye. Wana usema usema mbinu ufuata mwendo na basi runinga ya Y254 tunafuata mkondo huo kwa kisha tunalea vipaji na kupa burudani kupitia vipindi vya mziki, majadiliano na elimu pia tunaangazia masuala burudani na kukupa exclusive kutoka kwa mastaa wapendao hey,